Daddy Mac life drawing class. This happens every nine o'clock uh, Pacific time, nine a.m. Pacific time on Wednesdays, uh, twelve p.m. Eastern time, and uh, I'm your host Bobby Chu. I also have on here my amazing co-host Kay Asadera and our missing guest Anthony Francisco. Um, but anyways, this is brought to you by Schoolism. Schoolism is the place to go to learn from all your favorite. Uh, artists behind your favorite things. You know, do you want to learn from the person that helped to design Thanos? Well, that's Ian McKegg. He has a course. Do you want to learn from somebody that worked on Toy Story 3? Oscar nominees, Dice Tsutsumi, Robert Kondo, they also teach on schoolism.com. When you sign up for schoolism, you actually get access to all of the courses. It's kind of like Netflix for artists. But the more you binge, the, the better you get at art. You know, and the other thing, thing that um, I want to mention is that this is sponsored by Lightbox Expo. Lightbox Expo is the place to be to meet all of your favorite people behind all of your favorite things. This is going to be happening in person, live in Pasadena, California, October 14th to 16th. And without further ado, let's get on to some deer. Oh, that's hilarious, Kay. <laughs> all right. So... Where's Anthony Francisco, you may be asking? Well, um, perhaps it's daylight savings time kind of screwed him up a little bit. That's what we're kind of thinking, right, Kay? I think so. And I think we were <laughs> a little bit joking when we were saying, when I was saying, yeah, it's kind of like the new way of saying, uh, I'm intimidated. I'm scared to come on. It's daylight <laughs> savings time. But I'm just trolling you, Anthony. I hope, uh, I hope you'll watch this later and uh, get a good kick out of it. Um, so, of course, Anthony Francisco is no slouch either. He's definitely somebody that does not get intimidated very easily. He is a... Uh, he has designed so many characters for live action films with Marvel Studios, designing Baby Groot for uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and many, many more. So here's how it works. Let's get right into it. Today's topic is all about deer, okay? And it's going to be super simple. You're going to have four one-minute poses, four two-minute poses, four five-minute poses, and then four ten, or five ten-minute poses, and then we're done. Okay, you can also ask questions uh, by going into discord.gg slash Lightbox Expo, our Lightbox Expo Discord channel. Um, or you could ask Slido questions by going to slido.com, type in your question, or you could upvote questions there. Okay, so when we're done, you can upload the image with the hashtag 90 min art challenge and everybody will see it. Okay, so ready for our first pose here, Kay? One minute? Okay. All Let's right. Here we go. Deer is the topic. And here's the first one. Yeah. So I moved all the images aside, so I guess you can draw a little bigger today because I was anticipating Anthony on here as well. I bet you, yeah, maybe it is his alarm clocks. Yeah. Feel free to troll Anthony if you like. Uh, you have his handle right there on the uh, side of the screen. You could be like, where are you? Don't be nervous. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I am just well, joking, by the way. Always next week. Yeah. Right. It's just because I consider Anthony uh, a good friend and everything. Otherwise, I would never troll somebody like that <laughs> beautiful all right so that's the first one minute pose and let's go on to the second one is going to start in five four three two and here we go Man, I was so looking forward to drawing with Anthony, too. I know, me too. 
and then it's gonna happen do not worry yeah we'll make it happen we'll make it happen hopefully the next one the next one k i chose um yoga by mm. the way i hope that's all right yeah there's a lot of really interesting um poses in yoga as well as characters in yoga so <laughs> i thought it'd be fun oh jeez. well that's a good reminder that last drawing of mine is a good reminder that it doesn't really matter what you what it is that you end up sketching right and that i feel like that's a good kind of thing to think about for just about everything it doesn't matter um, what the result is. It's really the journey and how much effort you're putting into that journey that, that truly matters. And that's, gonna, that's what's going to really take us to our destination. One good drawing day does not take you to your destination. Also, consistency takes you to your destination. So for all of those that, where this isn't your first rodeo, this isn't your first Nighty Mac life drawing class, let us know in the comments. You know, I see a bunch of regulars, more and more every time. What beautiful reference you always pull out there, Bobby. Oh, thank you. I do my best. That's a beautiful little sketch. My goodness. All right. I got to I got to step it up a little bit. Always do. I'm just going to move this one over a touch cuz there's yeah. I'm, sure. I feel like I don't have enough room. Oh, yeah. Cool. Such interesting bodies, dear. <laughs> right. Last week. We all had a good workout with the uh, with the armor. <laughs> that yes, was hard. That. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was very difficult. So today it's a bit more relaxing, even though deer can be quite challenging as well. All right, so those are the first uh, one minute sketches. We're moving on to two minutes now. So keep in mind that these are two minute sketches, everybody. I can almost hear this uh, deer, you know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's what I kind of picture it sounding like. It's like trying to wake up Anthony. Yeah. Wake Rob up. Anthony. Daylight savings time, Anthony. Yeah. I, f I have a feeling that there's going to be quite a few people that will miss today's um, meetup because of daylight savings time. All good. People it, need their sleep. It's such a dumb thing. Like, why do we still have this, honestly? <laughs> Some places are starting to drop them. Which yeah, makes we're it evolving. more confusing. We're evolving right? from it. Yeah. This makes it so much more confusing. There's a question on Slido from Anonymous. 
Uh, do you have any advice about finishing projects? Um, I've lots of ideas to draw. I think so, I tend to draw things over and start over a lot. Oh. Um, let's just finish up this drawing here. It's a really good question. Okay, so first two minute pose, all done. Going on to the next one. I'll put it up here a little early. Yeah, so um, that's a really good question. And a lot of times because our personal projects, this is talking about a personal project or something, right? Like a lot of times our personal projects, especially, they always get put on the back burner because they're not urgent, right? They're not urgent because, you know, we have our daytime job and we could still pay the bills and all that good stuff if we don't actually do it. Um, but it is important. This is what it will take you. This is one of the common things that will take somebody to that next level is through the personal work that you do after work kind of thing on your own time. Um, and so for things that I can't get to, I can't seem to get to, I put in a time chunk into my calendar, right? And so no matter what I'm doing at that time, I got to drop it. I got to start on this other thing. And then um, I put a time limit on that because like, well, how long will I work on that personal project? you know, one hour, four hours, five hours. I can't work on it for five hours. And th those are the thoughts that are going to be in your head, right? Like, uh, I got to do all this other stuff that's, you know, really urgent. Uh, so I put a time limit on it, how long I'm going to actually work on that thing. Right? And that way, um, if I did my hour, then I could take it off my list. I could go to the next thing. And then at the end of the day, if I still have time, if I finished all my stuff, I find I still got time that I could come back to it, right? So you want to give yourself a time limit, like duration on that, that's easily doable, easily doable in a day, easily doable within your schedule. So if you have an insane schedule, put it in for five minutes you could do it for five minutes or think about it for five minutes, right? Um, that's what I find to be the best, most effective way. All right, here we go. For Nico and the Sword of Light, that's a very kind of good example of a very, very big project very very big personal project that we were able to finish it took us like two years on and off with our friends uh jim bryson and and adam jeffcoat but we did get it done right and again it's because we scheduled time weekends and late nights and that's all about nico and the sword of light that's all about our personal project right and it doesn't matter what we're doing what we have planned, we schedule around that sacred time. Make it sacred. All right. Let's concentrate on some deer. This is a beautiful deer, huh? Very beautiful. But I, I hear you though, those personal projects, it, it, it can be difficult to get done, even for professionals that can paint and draw real fast or whatever, it's still really hard. It's life gets in the way. See how many ways we can work uh, deer-related verbiage into our answers or into the conversation. I saw like uh, uh, 
all the copywriting <laughs> for this event. Did you see it, Kay? It's like all these like it's not. deer related funny puns or verbiage. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I did. Anyways, okay, last two minute pose here. Sometimes I forget to breathe. If you heard me taking a breath <laughs> just now. Yeah, he must be asleep. <laughs> it's been like 20 minutes. Another question from Slido, uh, from Anonymous. How do you deal with stress when you have a tight deadline? Oh. Well, um, you know, do what you can. Know that you can only do what you can. So think about everything you could do. And if you're doing those things, then honestly, like, uh, I, I don't stress about it anymore. Um, I know that could be difficult for a lot of people. But that, that is what I, that's how I focus my life, you know, like, uh, try to just focus on the things that you can affect because otherwise you know how stressful it can be to just concentrate on stuff that you can't do anything about it's crazy stressful that's a pretty simple one but a really you know a really good thing to adopt it can be difficult to adopt as well sometimes because especially if we've kind of like uh, never really tried to um, control our thoughts or meditate or things like that. That's what meditation is really good for as well. It's kind of bring you back to center. This is complex, huh? Now that I'm actually drawing mm -hmm. it, it's like, wow, it's kind of hard to get everything in the right place or harder than I thought. Mm -hmm. So this is also a five minute pose, everybody. So you can adjust accordingly, think about it. How are you gonna draw this differently? Sorry, Bobby, my computer just froze, so I'm just going to restart my computer. Okay. <laughs> it's one of those days. It is one of those days. <sighs> I've got too much stuff opened up. Uh, 
Yeah, if you do need to rest um, restart, feel free. Okay. It's a beautiful drawing, though. I just looked over. Thanks. Oh, right, because you're using a different computer for the Zoom. I was like, oh, you could restart your computer now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please work. Yeah, sorry for the little technical difficulties today, everybody. I'm going to try to edit this video after. A lot of editing. <laughs> well, we'll definitely I'm try to get Anthony back for next week's uh, thing where we're doing oh. yoga. That should be great. Yeah. Where we're drawing yoga as a theme, not doing yoga. <laughs> There's a question on Slido from Nicole. Any deer stories? Ooh. Ooh, deer stories. Let me think, let me think. Wait. <laughs> I'm sure there were, but it's not coming to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, next five minute pose. Here we go. Your stories? I don't think so. <laughs> you know, not really a lot of beautiful, so. nice deer. <laughs> yeah. Our yeah. biggest deer story probably was when we saw um, reindeers at the Santa Claus. Um, oh, that's cool. It's a Santa Claus kind of theme park, foresty thing that like, they have here in. in yeah, Antioch. we went in the summer. <laughs> yeah, it it runs. During the summertime, it's so funny yeah, it's... going to a Santa Claus themed uh, amusement park in the summer. There were these beautiful um, albino reindeers. Yeah, I don't really remember <laughs> much deer stories. Yeah, I don't really remember that, and I don't think like it was a very just wholesome day. I don't think there's much stories out of that, right? No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I remember was that my mom was so excited to drive um, those go-karts. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. That's I forgot all about the go-karts. She was so excited. She was the slowest person on the track by she took far. Her time. She took her time. <laughs> Remember when we took our mom's uh, dune bugging in Dubai? That was, that oh, was, that was epic. awesome. It was funny because my mom had her eyes closed the whole entire time. <laughs> yeah, she did not want to be on there, but she oh. didn't want to be the person, you know, to say, oh, I don't want to be on there. She's such a trooper. She is. I did not know that this whole time. Oh, yeah. I asked her to record, you know, like, uh, okay, I'll drive, you record. And then I look at the video and it's like, man, I just see the dashboard. You don't even see me driving. You don't see anything. 
<laughs> and I asked her, and she's like, oh, I don't know. I was just pointing it. I had my eyes closed. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but how many, you know, 70-something-year-olds go dune buggying in the desert at Dubai? Exactly. So she could keep her eyes closed. It's fine. Still thinking, like I feel like I should have some sort of deer story <laughs> somewhere, but I, <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I give up. Nothing comes to mind right now. Yeah, sorry. I think it's always so magical when you see like a deer, uh, randomly, you know, like uh, running around. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It is always a magical moment. Well, um, one time I was I was skyping with Ian McKegg, and he, he's like in his beautiful studio and everything, and then I see a deer in the background just walking past, you know, like through the window. And then I and then I saw another deer, and I was like, oh my god, there's there's two deer in your backyard. And he's like, no. And he turns the camera and he's like, there's more like eight deer. And you see all <laughs> these deer. <laughs> all right. That's awesome. Actually, there's eight deer. He's like Snow White or something. The animals just come to him. Five minute pose. That was the third five minute pose. Wow, today's going by so quick. That was really fast, Bobby. Right, so here is the third five minute pose starting now. Beautiful. Yeah, they really are. It's these beautiful creatures. Okay, let's go, Bobby. Get it together.
um, there's a question on Slido, and um, it's, it's from someone who is really wanting to get into the industry, and they're asking, do you think that I will ever have a chance to make it in the industry if I kept drawing every day, uh, sometimes eight or 12 hours, and never take a day off drawing? If, if you're kind of concentrating in the right way, if you're looking at things and thinking about things in the right way, you know, it's like um, if, I, if I go to the gym every day for like uh, two hours a day, will I grow muscles? If you do the right exercises, right? If you go into the gym and you're just kind of um, talking with everybody or, you know, or if you're not doing your exercises correctly, then there's no growth. But if you are doing your exercises correctly, then there can be tremendous growth and almost guaranteed there will be tremendous growth, right? I, I want to say guaranteed if you have the proper kind of uh, instructions and you're doing the right things because really I've seen it. I've I've done these like exercises with people. I'm thinking about my um, animal, my speed sketching animals course actually that just finished. Everybody finished and at the end of it, you know, we went through the last bit of homework and I showed their homework from the very first week. And everybody was so shocked with like, oh shoot, I was doing that in the beginning. Wow. Yeah. You know, and the reason why, like, in the very beginning of the course, I would tell them, you all are going to improve a, a ton as long as you keep meeting up with me, as long as you keep doing the assignments. I guarantee it, you know, um, because when you're told to draw the right things in the right order, I've done this, you know, where somebody told me what to draw, and I've done this where I'm telling somebody else what to draw, things get easier. When you're told what to draw, uh, what to think about in the right order, all of a sudden everything gets easier, right? Have you ever done a tutorial where, okay, yeah, I'll follow these steps, and then you're surprised, right? You're surprised with the outcome. And you're like, wow, that really did work. Very much, it's very much the same thing with uh, learning. Right, like this is great as well. If you want to learn, draw with us. Draw with us each week. Right, and if you want to learn more, then do a class with us. You know, my classes, I actually explain the thought process as I'm, as you know, the weeks go on. So that way I have this opportunity to tell people, okay, this is how I think. This is why I think. This is what order I think it in because it gets much easier, right? If you build a house in the wrong order, you're going to get a horrible looking house or a dangerous house that won't stay up. Drawings are kind of the same thing. If you draw it in the wrong order, you think about things in the wrong order, many times it's still doable in that way. But many times you're doing it in the much harder way and you can actually draw and paint a lot better than you think you can. It's just that you're constantly doing the wrong things in the wrong order or thinking about the wrong things. This is a nice little break, huh? This uh, half body. You can really yeah. get into some uh, details here and stuff.
Oh, I also want to mention the, uh, there's this thing that we're doing with DeviantArt for the Superhero Project. The Superhero Project is a, uh, it's a non-profit um, where we, we find uh, families, kids that are um, seriously ill, terminally ill, things like that, and uh, we bring joy into their lives through art. Um, a lot of times we do things like we ask the child uh, to make up a superhero, right? And, and then the artist would then create that superhero for them, like, uh, you know, a super, I don't know, Dr. Captain or something that cures, uh, cures kids of cancer, you know, or like there was Insulin Woman. That's like one of the most memorable ones for me because the girl, she had uh, diabetes or she has diabetes and she was just saying, you know, my superhero that I would love to see is an Insulin Woman who will give insulin to the kids that need it, to, you know, things like that. Um, so anyways, we're working with DeviantArt. We're not asking for any money. Actually, it's more like I did a tutorial for DeviantArt on how to draw a profile. And if you do the tutorial, you do the drawings of a profile, every drawing that's submitted, um, DeviantArt will donate more money to the superhero kids, uh, superhero project. So it's a really great cause. There's less than one week left. Uh, and you can find details on my Twitter. And yeah. And big shout out to DeviantArt for doing that, you know, for us as well. All right, 10 minute poses now. Here we go, here's the first one. Oh, beautiful. Awesome, I'm glad you feel that way. Just gotta raise up my, my desk a bit. I forgot I lowered the desk and then I've just been drawing like hunched over. Oh no. <laughs> this whole <Yeah>. time. <laughs> it's like, wow, this is so uncomfortable. It relates a bit to my question um, in Discord from, uh, from Buffy, uh, Bloody Buffy. <laughs> question for both How do you deal with back pain, RSI, um, and uh, all kinds of issues for pre-log pre drawing. Ah, well, everybody's different. There's so much stuff in us that whatever my issue is and whatever my solution is may totally not work for you. Mm -hmm. So I, I would suggest like, if it's something serious, look into like a physiotherapist. And if that physiotherapist can't cure you in a, you know, or can't tell you what's wrong, quickly uh, within a few sessions or whatever then I would switch to another physiotherapist until you find the right one because there's many different kind of levels I guess I don't know that's from my own experience as well because I've tried uh, multiple things and then multiple people that do the same kind of thing and that's how I kind of figured out how to get better um, but one thing that I've 
I could recommend is this thing that I'm sitting on. I don't even know it. Yeah, I can't really show it, but it's this thing. It's called a it's called a back joy. And it just helps you to just sit there longer. Uh, I always take it with me on like uh, on airplane rides because you got to sit there for so dang long. And it just helps to tilt your, um, your pelvis in the right direction or whatever and just takes a lot of strain, a lot of stress off of your, your lower back. I like that seat. Right? It works yeah. for everybody. I gave it to my mom, you know, and she was totally digging it. You got one, you know, you have it's the, life changing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, life changing. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's strong. Okay. <laughs> Other things you can do at home is definitely to stretch. Yeah. Right, Bobby? Yes. You know, Take those things are harder, right? Very important. So. Yeah, our next topic is a great solution, isn't it? Yoga. Yeah. Yoga is a fantastic solution. I've heard so many people say like that's how they got kind of out of their issues, whatever those issues were. Yeah. And just making sure, you know, when you work, you are in a comfortable position and that you're certain parts of your body will be strained. So, you know, try to not strain them even more by sitting in an awkward position, which we are all guilty of. Like I sit in like the weirdest position sometimes when you're just like, yes, you do. focus. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I look like an Elden Ring like demon. <laughs> <laughs> look like a pretzel sometimes, I, I wanna say. Like this curled up pretzel with a with a hand out and a drawing <laughs> it's amazing that you could still draw like that though then you pass by bobby and i'm just like hello <laughs> <laughs> elden ring boss i didn't i didn't know you'd go there <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> that's how i feel <laughs> Yeah, we don't Everyone's play. All about Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't played Elden Ring, but we no. enjoyed watching a lot of like walkthroughs. I dare not to play it. It will suck everything. All your time will be gone. And that's just designing your character. Probably. I love watching it. Somebody's here. Hey. Um, Bobby, someone is a fan of your seats. <laughs> CJ Rosotto is asking, uh, can you tell the name again? Oh, and... uh, Back Joy. Back Joy, see. <laughs> back Joy. Look it up. Yeah. I got mine off of Amazon. Oh shoot, look who woke up. Oh, <laughs> is he here? oh my goodness. Anthony! You made it. You I'm made so it. sorry. Oh my God. It's so crazy. It's my okay. Alarm. We're live right now, wow. just to let you know. Wait, you said your alarm? Yes. Yes. I always have it on, and, and I fell asleep downstairs. And then I'm like, oh my god, I woke up. It must still be eight o'clock because it's still dark. No, I'm I... <laughs> sorry guys. No I was looking forward to this and I'm late. I'm we totally guessed it. Filipino time. Oh man. <laughs> this Filipino time is not real. This is the first time this happened to <laughs> <laughs> it's okay we thought it was uh, daylight savings maybe that was what kind of messed you up um it probably did mess me up because 
but usually my alarm is on but um and i actually just usually wake up at seven just you know i just wake up just naturally <laughs> yeah it's okay if you're allowed to you know <laughs> <laughs> we explain to everybody how nerve-wracking it is to sketch with us for you so you know we understand <laughs> um Am I, are we, are, is everyone? Yeah, so the link is in the, uh, in the calendar invite. Oh yeah, where is it? Okay, I'm going to go. Uh, wait, but people could hear me now. They can, you're live, that's what I was saying. Oh, I'm live, that's right. <laughs> hey, of course. Don't say nothing crazy. I just woke up. <laughs> oh man, how are you guys? Great. How are you I, doing? I am, um, uh, I'm, uh. I'm awake to now. Yeah, you got any deer stories, Anthony? Uh, I do actually. Uh, oh. I do have a deer story. Right. That's why I, I want to come to this deer thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect! Because uh, I have a deer story. Um, oh, here it is. Hang on. Okay. Uh, I, I I wanted to draw it out. Uh, let me go to. I have to continue with Google. Yeah, so uh, again, everyone, I apologize. Coming it's in. okay. It's all good. It's all, all good. good. It's a very chill um, vibe here. Yeah. Um, Sometimes we're not talking at all. We're just drawing, you know. By the way, these are 10 minute poses. There's one minute left uh we're so yeah yeah we have four more uh 10 minute poses and then we're done but don't worry anthony there's always next week as well and we're yes. so happy and excited that you would even want to come and draw with us so of course <laughs> i am as you know i am not um at marvel anymore uh, so I have a little more time with stuff. Awesome. You're with free life. Man. Free man. <laughs> That's great. Um, so my elk, my, here, here I am. I am, how do I, how do I, I just look for a spot here. Oh, yeah, yeah could... I'll make more room for the next Oops. one for you. Okay. Um, so my elk story, hey, it's an elk story. It's not a deer story. Um, we, uh, the family went, uh, camping in, I think it was somewhere in Zion. Oh, wow. Think, Zion, um, that's the one that's close to Las Vegas, I think. And, um, wait, not Zion, uh, um, Grand Canyon area, the Grand Canyon area. And, uh, we had to go home sooner than everyone else. So we left, like, at I think it's 4 30 in the morning this is what's crazy 4 30 in the morning and we were driving road was clear I it felt like it was cleared and and this huge elk was crossing first I thought it was an alien is this an alien the face I thought we were gonna crash you know but it felt like like a, a Star Wars movie really because <laughs> The elk was so huge, and you're coming under it, and you see the face like, blur, you know, um, <laughs> while you're driving. Yeah, while I'm driving across the street, like it's hard to explain. So I was gonna draw oh, it out. Scary, because it was scary. You could get really seriously mm -hmm. injured. Because I thought I didn't know how to react, but I reacted uh, quick enough that I got out of the way. But the legs were, you know, really long, like an at at oh. walker. <laughs> That's what and maybe you're like the little um what do you call that star uh spaceship coming under it. I love how we have yeah. to talk about science fiction to relate it. <laughs> <laughs> it did feel like that. That's like a and, and it was dark enough that it was just like a, a you know a shape crossing like a dark shape until when it put its head out, then 
from that dark silhouette, I saw the face in the face. At first, I didn't even feel like an elk. It just felt like a like Bigfoot or something. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh. yeah, it was weird. It was a weird experience. <laughs> well, I they're definitely even... a lot like uh, like the moose. Oh, my goodness. They're so much bigger than what people generally imagine them to be. Yes. Right? Like, yes. Um, you couldn't even get on the back of a moose without like a ladder, a step ladder or something. Oh. Right, they are oh, absolutely be. gigantic. Uh, but there's also a little bit less than eight minutes left. I don't know if you want to draw, but um, mm -hmm. we do have a bunch of space if you if you oh, like yes. to draw. Yes, yes. Oops. I'll move yeah, over as was... well, just in case. You want to draw up there? Oh, I'll move mine down. Oh, so I can move this image over slightly too. Oh, this is I think I have this. Cool. Yeah, no worries with overlapping and like yeah. Just this <laughs> just due to whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's just just for practice. I, I was gonna say I felt like we were in the car like this. This is the windshield. And right like that and it's like it's like i just saw the face like right here whoa, whoa. that's big <laughs> no, i was like whoa and then lisa was sleeping over here but be beforehand when we were driving so you just saw the nose like this is the nose and then like yeah but from from far away i saw like a it's like a like a shadowy figure with long legs coming on the street like that, you know, tree, trees on the side like this. Mm. They came out from the, and I was like, what is that? Is that an alien? I thought, are we gonna get abducted? That's the first thing I was thinking. And we come, <laughs> we became that close, but we passed it before it came over us. And it's like, oh my God, it's insane. Wow. Yeah, it was scary. It didn't even feel like that's, a moose or a... That's quite the experience, the encounter. And my brother hit a deer uh, driving. Couldn't avoid oh. it. Kind of sprang out like out of nowhere. He hits it and it ran away. Total, like totally messed up the car. But uh, the deer seemed fine. It just kind of sprung, sprung up and right into the woods. Oh man, yeah. Bill Pressing has a good deer story where he, um, I think he was in college or something. And this is the uh, head of story for Turning Red, for a little context <laughs> of Bill Pressing. Um, I think oh. he was in college. He, he went with his friends to a abandoned, uh, and I'm going to say insane <laughs> asylum. Because it wasn't a mental hospital like what we know now where people care about you and try to try to attempt proper care. This is like, you know, late 1800s insane asylum where it was pretty much like a prison. Right. And it was abandoned. And he goes in there with his friends late at night. Right. But like traveling yeah. there, um, all of a sudden he sees all these eyes everywhere as he's approaching the thing like these little dots, you know, like, like the vampire or the werewolf or whatever <laughs> in the night, but it was deer and there oh, were tons insane. of them. So all of a sudden you're, you know, you're driving in pitch blackness and you're driving towards an insane asylum that's abandoned, who knows what kind of torturous things have happened in there. And then all of a sudden <laughs> you see like a hundred eyes, you know, in the darkness, right? reflecting off of your your car your car's headlights that's creepy <laughs> yeah that's scary that's really scary that was a really great story oh yeah that's scary. you know something like that um well not 
it's not with deer, but the effect of what, seeing like a bunch of eyes, red eyes or something. Mm-hmm. Um, this is in my first apartment, and uh, I-, I was having a really bad dream, <laughs> like a like a bunch of demons attacking me or something. Wow. <laughs> yeah, red eyes all around, and. I jump up, I wake up, you know, and I jump up and my hands are up and it's darkness all around me as, as in my room. Um, and But I was looking around and I see a bunch of red dots around me too. So I thought, am, am I awake or, you know, it just still feels like the dream. Um, mm. And as my eyes focus in, in the dark, all the red dots all merge into one dot. And that one dot was the phone that was on the wall. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. <laughs> and my wife was like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, I thought you're being attacked. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I, f- I feel so, like yeah, there's that's... a theme with your stories. <laughs> like <laughs> constantly getting this uh, attack. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's... It's funny. That was funny. And I just had to laugh because you worked on too many action movies. <laughs> too many. <laughs> yeah, too many uh, horror movies. Horror movies. <laughs> yeah. Or movies with aliens coming to get you. Yeah, that's where my mind goes. It's either aliens or spirits. Really? You um, see a lot of spirits? Um, I, I don't see it. I just, you know, I, I feel that's where my mind goes right away it could be maybe i'm superstitious a little bit um sometimes i say i don't really believe in that stuff but you know things happen um yeah which uh you know i'll have a really good story for you bobby for uh, halloween (laughs) (laughs) okay I think I kind of told you right already, um, but Halloween's like the perfect time to. Yeah, yeah. So I actually that Bill Pressing story. I recorded it for Halloween. He presented oh. it to me or whatever. I also asked yeah. Anthony. I also asked you to do a story <laughs> as well. But there was so much background noise and all like oh, all this sorry. stuff that I wasn't able to use it. Oh. Yeah, that was Next why. Time. But you, uh, yeah, you. I don't know if we want to turn this. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, into uh, a, a horror story. <laughs> but uh, it, it it all depends on you. That's why I didn't like say it because we're we're drawing deer. Yeah, it's very peaceful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> maybe for uh, maybe for a future thing, we can get yeah, into some yeah. horror stuff. Just, yeah. Save it for a good moment when yeah. once a strike. <laughs> and hey <Yeah>. Anthony. <laughs> hey. Good to Patricia, see you. Hi. Good to see you too. All That's right. Fun. So this is ten minutes. We have um let's see. Yeah, two more ten minute poses here. Okay, so the next one. You could clear your board. You could start a new layer, Anthony. How, how do you um, clear? Or you could just turn off the eyeball. Eyeball, eyeball. You know, the uh, eyeball on the uh, okay, layer. I see. And then you can... Um, yeah, I'll move this over a bit. Yeah, and then you can make mm-hmm. a new layer. Do you see the new layer button? It's yeah, uh, right yeah. above the trash can button. Okay, see it there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oops. What else have you guys been up to? Uh, Art and life <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and currently there's a key. lot of Lightbox Expo things going on in Oh yeah, life. what's happening? Uh, just getting, just working on it. Oh, it's right. a lot of prep. But it begins. It begins, yes. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Yes, 
that was such an amazing first year in person and yeah you know two and a half three years later we're coming back in person again it's gonna be great can't wait uh when i move the canvas this way does it everyone's canvas move no nope. go ahead and oh, okay, cool. move as much as you like you can rotate the canvas you can do all sorts of things hmm. By the way, everybody, uh, I did get a question um, in the previous stream. What program are we using to be able to draw and paint together? That's with Magma Studio. If you go to magmastudio.io or magmastudio.com, um, you can use the same program. And how much does it cost? For you, my friends, free, <laughs> free. Yeah, so you can use it for free. and. If you want to support or if you want some of the extra bells and whistles, then you can get the uh, the premium version, the subscription, and then you get all these extra features and such. Cool. And yeah. we have a question uh, on the Slido uh, from Noah. Uh, what is the strangest Ooh. real creature that you drew? Oh, that's a good strangest real creature. Hmm. Can we also include just strangest <laughs> creature you've encountered? Because uh, if it's just drawing, maybe that might be a little limited. Yeah, yeah. That's what I look for every time. Hmm. The strangest creature for my creature hmm. designs. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely encountered a There's... lot. So I'm yeah. not sure which one to talk about, but since we have our guest of yeah. honor here, do you want to start? Does anything come to mind, Anthony? For me, I think um, a lot of weird fishes that I've had to draw for this one project. Oh. But we learned a lot of like cool fishes. Do you remember that, Bobby? Was that um, Mr. Lindsay years ago? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, Mr. Limpet was a uh, film. We learned a lot about um, fish. <laughs> There's like a remake of the old Disney classic, Mr. Limpet, with Don Knotts, I think, was the original. Um, the movie was never made, unfortunately, but we had a lot of fun <laughs> researching things. Like Sheephead Fish is one that I can't forget. Cause that one, yeah, me too. They that start off with, like, every Sheephead Fish starts off as one gender, and then they mature into another gender. Right. Oh. That's the one that sticks in my mind forever. Like I've never encountered a sex changing creature. Yeah. That was really interesting. Um, but then there was also the, uh, there's one with a giant mouth. What was that one? Remember, it spreads out its mouth into this really, really giant thing. Do you remember that, Kay? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot the name. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to remember while you're drawing. But yeah, that was another um, really interesting one. Shoot, I can't remember. One of the weirdest creatures, or one of the most fun kind of creatures I've ever uh, got to encounter in real life was a toucan. Toucan. Yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah. yeah, like their beaks feel like plastic. Wow. It's super light and it, it's fun. Like they can nibble on your uh, finger, right? And it just feels like this <laughs> little plastic thing. It's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What else is there? Cool. 
Oh, and also now. the toucan, uh, it has translucent skin. Like if you spread apart the the feathers, like where its neck is, you can see <laughs> through its flesh, everybody. You want a weird <laughs> fact? You want a weird creature fact? Look it up. It doesn't sound real, right? It doesn't sound real. Please look up. You know, see through... Uh, you know, toucan flesh or something like that. <laughs> you'll find, I'm sure you'll find some stuff. Lost my place for a second here. Oh, another one was these uh, giant, these giant endangered freshwater eels that we got to, oh, right. we got to um, feed in the wild in uh, New Zealand, right? They were not in captivity. And uh, a friend of mine uh, brought us up there when we were checking out Weta. That was neat ah. because those eels, they just evolved in that one spot. Like they're not naturally meant to be there, but somehow this pod just got stuck there on the mountain. Ah. And that became like... <laughs> their habitat <laughs> well yeah because it's these giant eels on top of a mountain isn't that weird Anthony? wow yeah how did they get there how does the stream even <laughs> yeah. how's the stream even up there i don't understand it but it was like you know my, my buddy is... was like uh save your tacos don't eat your we're at lunch and he's like don't eat all your lunch he takes a bunch of it and he's like save this <laughs> Oh, I'm taking you somewhere. And then we go up this mountain and he's like, yeah, the stream, throw in some of your taco into the stream. And then all of a sudden these giant eels come out of the water, right? You know, where, where, before they're camouflaged and everything. And then you see them and you're like, holy smokes, these things are amazing. They're so big. And then he's like, yeah, feed them with your hands, right? Yeah. Feed them with your, so yeah. you got to feel them. So yeah. I feel them chomping on my hand. <laughs> they don't have teeth. But they don't have teeth. And it's like Muppets with Velcro. Right? Yeah, Muppets. <laughs> it's just like, it feels like these giant eel Muppets coming out of the water and like taking the taco out of your hands in the most like fun way possible. It's amazing. Or like, yeah. They're kind of like Pokemon too. <laughs> <laughs> and they're blind are they oh. blind they're blind oh. what well, either that's way, why they they sense the they sense with their um their senses of uh, smell oh wow that's so cool well, i got another one actually on that same trip because uh because it's on the same trip i kind of remember <laughs> We went to a uh, a tour through a like a glowworm cave, right? A cave with all these glowworms in, inside. And so you go into the cave, and then you turn off all the lights so that you can see the glowworms better. And then uh, we check out these glowworms, and then the guy's like saying, "Yeah, you know why they glow? It's to attract the flies." And then he oh. proceeds to tell us that the glowworms actually evolve into the flies when they get oh. older. Wow. All right. Last and they, or uh, second last 10 minute pose here. Wow, that's gorgeous, Kay. Oh. Holy smokes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Whoa, that's a nice one. This one is the one that snuck up on. Anthony, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a beast. Yeah, yeah, that was so scary. But just to cl finish that little story there, it's like yeah. this closed off ecosystem, it seemed, because the glowworms eat the flies, and the flies are the glowworms, <laughs> right? That's so crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy. So, and then the flies. It's like the glowworms worms will keep eating the flies to the point where they can evolve into the flies and they'll cocoon up or whatever. 
and wow. you know come out as one of these flies but when they come out apparently they don't have a mouth <laughs> they don't have a mouth when they come out That's right so, so they have about like i don't know 24 hours two days to um find a mate before they starve to death and die so they try to find a mate and in the last moments of their lives they look up and they see the stars and they fly towards the light and then they get oh, eaten man. they get eaten <laughs> by themselves by their own kind right now tell oh, me man. that is not some like weird star trek episode man. or something like that that's it's a dark. really weird wow. creature that is sustainability that's what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how in the most brutal way yeah i guess so oh man you just reminded me of um ants i think that is the weirdest thing i've done when i was working on i mean ants aren't that weird right but once you're talking about how their life cycle is or what they do mm -hmm. to each other and i just remembered working on ant-man and i was researching just every day i was work watching mm -hmm. ants documentaries and then there's this one documentary about the like the honey ants or something like that and um yeah if everyone gets to you know, look for the documentary watch. It's it's a awesome, like um, kingdom uh, 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 opera or something like that. It's like these two ant kingdoms. Um, oh, cool. <laughs> but the weirdest thing was when, as I was thinking, man, if these were people. You know, it just the way it was shot, the way it was told, the story was like two kingdoms. But there's a scene where, during winter time, they need to um, stock up food and stuff. So uh, one of the, I think it's called honeypot ants. I, I have to remember so I don't quote it wrong. But one of the, the ants would be getting sugar water, right? But they would be saving it. But you know how they save it? They use one of the other ants to put it in their bodies. And they're, I know, they're, they're um, what do you call it? Thorax gets uh, yeah. so huge. It's just. They use Massive. the thorax as like a bag. A bag. They're a human. Ah, human, sorry. They're a, you know, <laughs> a, a container, like ant containers. So once they're really big and they can't expand anymore, they kind of hang from the, not hang from the ceiling, but they were, I remember they were hanging from the ceiling of their, you know, their burrow. Um yeah, and then when it's time to eat, they would open their mouths and the ants would be in line to get the Whoa. food. What? So they're still alive? They're still alive, yeah. They're still Whoa. alive. Oh, so they're able to carry it without dying. Yes, yes. Oh. They, they just expand. And I thought, you know, it's like the group goes out, they find some honey or whatever, and then they look at each other and they look, uh, <laughs> they decide on who's going to be the bag. <laughs> Oh yeah, God. no, the, the whole colony just brings the sugar water back to base and then they fill that one ant up with the sugar water. Um, but there's like a bunch of ants that gets filled up with sugar waters. I don't know if there's this more the specialized ants that can do that. Um, but yeah, they just expand and and yeah, it, it feels like, of course, my mind goes to, you know, how can I use this for design? Yeah, <laughs> if they're like pitch anything? <laughs> yeah, humans, you know, like... <laughs> just blown up and if humans acted that way it would look so um disgusting <laughs> creepy yeah um, i don't know this that. look uh, remarkable i've sent a picture in the lbx live chat in our discord if you want to check it out but oh you uh, actually found it yeah the honey pot ads <laughs> awesome. uh, that's really gross cool. so i actually right. got it right <laughs> honey pot <laughs> man and the saddest part uh, is when in the story when the two ant colonies went to war, um, then, you know, they, would st they wouldn't they would kill those ants with the honey, uh, with the sugar water in them. It would just bring them over to their side. Oh. And, and then force their mouths open kind of thing, or I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to, to take the, but some of them get killed, just break 
open and all the sugar oh. water is out. Oh, oh my yikes. gosh, that's yikes. so yeah. brutal. Yeah. yeah, they're they're brutal. Um, and and they they attack the food source first, so you know it starved them for winter or something. Wow, some true yeah. uh, like warfare kind of strategies. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys know, but the ant colonies are are uh, mostly female. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're all female, uh-huh. and they only breed <laughs> they. They only breed the males for one thing only, and then after that, uh, the 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 males die. <laughs> oh, yeah, they... <laughs> brutal. It's brutal. like <clears throat> there's just a chamber where all the males are, and their wings, you know, are growing, and they they kind of groom the wings and clean it and stuff, getting them ready to fly out into the world, and then the um. The queen bee, I guess, goes out, right? They'll have a bunch of queen bees also, and they all go out together in the world. Queen, are um, we talking about bees or ants? Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, queen ants. Sorry, queen ants. Oh, okay. Um, but but they the queen ant has wings, right? Mm. Um, all the they just look like bees. Sorry, thanks for uh, <laughs> correcting me. <laughs> no Say, so, well, ants becomes bees, but they eat each other and they turn into bees <laughs> just kidding Dang. <laughs> um wow. but yeah the the ants go in their own the queen ants get brought out into the world they start their own colony but they try to go far enough where they're not too close to the main colony because you know they'll get attacked for sure i see just a quick reminder, everybody. Uh, there's a little bit over two minutes left in this 10 Whoa. minute pose. I saw a case painting, that's why I'm doing it this way now. <laughs> that's okay. So, okay, that's a great idea. <laughs> Let me just try to do it in color. It's like, how do you go across here? That was, that was so awesome. Case quick. Oh, you guys, you guys are quick too. Yeah. I can't talk and, and draw at the same thing like, like you guys do. Neither can we. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> look, this guy. There's actually a question uh, for you, Kay Slido. Um, uh, Kay, what steps are, are there to learn for color and uh, to make it less difficult? Oh. You can break it up in maybe three phases. You could do your base, you know, and then do something darker and then do a light pass. Would like just break it up in those three phases at first and then you can always build on top. And um, a good practice would be doing it in uh, black and white first, so you focus more on um, what do you call it? The values, the levels, the, the values. Levels. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, values. <laughs> the values. The values. Thank you, <laughs> my brain. And then my totally. My values. But sometimes for these practices, my mind wanders. So you'll see me picking out in different spots and <laughs> going about it in random yeah. places. And it's this all is good. so fun, though. I don't think I've, I I get to practice with anybody drawing right. like this, I'm just yeah. hanging out. Um, yeah. You remember? I uh, just talking about forgetting and not be able to say a certain word. I remember I was with Bobby. And uh, I, I, on one of the other streams, and I was trying to say uh, anatomy. Anatomy. <laughs> Do you remember that? No. I was like, anat- an- anatomy? Anatomy. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what am I saying? I want to say anatomy and anatomical at the same time. So it, it went like an- anat- anatomy. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> It always think, happens with like the simplest words, and you're like, "What the? What was that again?" Oh my yeah. God. And Patricia, I think, was the one that. It's always good to have Patricia around. <laughs> no doubt. 
Uh, just a little reminder, everybody. This is the last pose, okay? This is the last pose for today. I have another question on Slido. I think to someone, a question that you guys can relate maybe to. Uh, how to practice taking courses while having a full-time job, which is also an animation. Um, so yeah. I think they're trying to get like how, uh, how you can combine all those things and still do your job well. And <laughs> oh, wow. yes, that is. Uh, yeah. I always have um, the class open in a window. Like, you know, while I'm working or whatever, it's it's one of my tabs. And every time I get a chance, you know, I, I watch it and I'll do it. And the other thing is I uh, schedule time in. Currently, I have not scheduled any time in. So because I'm training a couple uh, new people in in the company and everything. But once that's done, then I'm going to put it back in. And that way, you know, no matter what I'm doing in my day or whatever, uh, I can see it there. And, and I know that that's something that I also want to accomplish before the day is done. You know, make it as important as the other things in your life. If you truly want to get something done, you just got to put more importance on it. Yeah, that's definitely that's a good way of doing it for sure. So the reminder is always there. Yeah, it's just very accessible. I just find like half the battle is getting started. But then once you start, it's so it's so easy to go for 20 minutes, an hour more, you know. It's just getting started is the toughest part. Yeah. Especially when you're, when you got, you know, a full time job and everything, you can be very tired, things like that. But even when you're tired, if you could just get yourself to start, it, you know, very likely you'll be able to keep going. Would you say, um, yeah, I tried to schedule my time too so I could do it, but um, I, the struggle for me is um, right now, and you at my age and where I'm at now with my career, like I was trying to learn um, Blender. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was hard because um, even if I had the tabs on or I scheduled myself to do it, it was like I couldn't do it. It was hard. And then eventually, I was able to do it saying that, okay, Saturday, I'm going to wake up at five in the morning and just go from five to, you know, seven or something and just, or even just all day, just one day, all day, I'm just going to do this. Mm -hmm. um, take breaks in, the, in between. My breaks are going to be my work. Uh, sorry, <laughs> that's, uh, you know, bad work-life balance there because Saturday I'm working and I'm doing a blender. Um, uh, but that, that was before when I was at Marvel. Um, now it's a little bit different because now I'm, uh, I'm writing more. So I'm doing script writing classes. And um, that's cool. Yeah, it's a bit crazy. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm doing something else. <laughs> it's like then drawing. Um, but yeah, so I'm going through the same thing. Uh, whoever asked the question where now it's, it's on the writing side of stuff. Um, luckily I had taken some writing classes before and it's helping me now, but I need more, I guess. Mm -hmm. More training. Yeah, I was taking a blender class, um, I've done the donut, you know, yeah. the famous donut and stuff like that. And uh, 
But then afterwards, I'm like, well, I don't want to make a donut. I want to make this other thing. How the hell do yeah. I make this other thing? And then I, I stopped learning Blender, right? And then yeah. later, what happened was um, I got uh, Sonia Kristoff, who is, you know, very well uh, versed in Blender to do a Blender course on schoolism. And, awesome. you know, the biggest difference was right in the beginning she goes this is how you set up blender do this and this and nice. this and change this about the the interface and this is how i use blender <laughs> and then all of a sudden i was like you know giant light bulb goes off i'm like oh my god this is so much better this is so much more intuitive, intuitive. and all this stuff and awesome. i think to myself like if i didn't actually find that you know, how Sonia has adjusted things. And I think she gave even a little script to put in uh, oh. to really customize. You know, I, I was like, I wonder how well I would learn Blender without all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Because I was struggling before that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so big shout out to, uh, to Sony for doing an awesome course and helping me to learn Blender. I have to take that class now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good class. You know, the very first lesson, you're not making a donut, you're making a, a convenience store. Oh, right that's with cool. like a ton of like an asian convenience store you know so there's like just a ton of stuff all over the place like sticking yeah. out of stuff um you know being held up by a bamboo kind of thing holding it up <laughs> kind of stuff like yeah it gets intense um, that's it's cool. great though There's another question on Slido um, is, how can I improve my acting and character design? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I think having a mirror. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely all the time, or, or just at least standing up, looking at the mirror, trying different gestures. Um, it's funny because it, 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 even though I just I um you wouldn't think you need acting and character design, but you yeah you kind of do. Um, some people take improv classes. Mm hmm. You know. I remember Andy Kung, a storyboard artist. He was talking about taking. Um, yeah. Improv classes. You know, I would say also taking a script writing class can improve your. Your like. Your um, how do you say this? Your uh, character development, storytelling, because then you know you, you think of the thing you're designing a little bit more um, holy, I guess. Hmm. I feel like I'm not sure, but I feel like this person may be talking more about like uh, expressive poses. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Is is that what it's more about, uh, Patricia? I think so yeah 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 well um there's actually a course on schoolism <laughs> it's actually called expressive characters by voter <laughs> Culp. so if you're looking for something more like teaching you how kind of thing um then that would be the course that's literally what uh, yeah, what yeah. it's about But I also agree with everything that uh, Anthony was saying too, like a mirror, that's that's fantastic and such a simple thing that everybody has generally. So, um, yeah. Final pose, but we can sketch a little bit further. Uh, love to see what your sketch looks like in the end, Anthony. Maybe we'll just sketch a little bit longer. Are you cool with that? Are you 
able to do that, Anthony? Bobby, how do you change it? <laughs> hey, sorry, my uh, audio cut out for a sec. What was the thing? Oh. Was how do you on? change brushes? Change brushes. Oh, the short hands. What's that? The short hand in magma for changing brushes. Um, you mean like the size of your brush, or the, or the actual kind type? Of oh, well. Is there a thing? Or... Yeah, I turned mine off. Um, originally, it's uh, they're the numbers. You can you can hit the yeah. number keys to go back to the old brushes that you just had. Oh, Let's see. Yeah, usually mm -hmm. I change that to opacity though. I have it, con you know, controlling the opacity because that's what it's like in Photoshop. So I just want to do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's... I was going to mention as well, like, uh, so this is the last pose, but, you know, it's the last pose. So I hope it's okay w we go on a little bit further, Anthony, you know. Yeah, I'm yes. Sure, everybody would love to check out your sketches and everything, what it looks like when it's done. Yeah. This is a cool pose, um, especially for a creature. I almost just want to turn this to a creature, just like use the front part of the right, you know, like, like use the front part like this and just make it into like another. Sure, anything yeah. goes. This is what I do with my animal sketches. I just turn them into aliens. Okay. That's neat. There's a, a question for Anthony in the Discord um, from Ray. Um, which writing class uh, are you taking currently? <laughs> and um, what can you do to improve your creative writing? Uh, currently, it hasn't started yet, but I'm planning to take a writing class in uh, script anatomy. Um, and it, it is, they're amazing. They're uh, all uh, professionals in the industry. And um, uh, since I'm working on a, on a TV series, I, I'm taking a TV uh, series writing course. Uh, it's called Television Something. I forgot the exact title. Um, and what was the other question? Other question was about what can uh, they do to improve creative writing? Oh, yes. Um, I think what I do, I give myself exercises. It's almost like just giving a drawing exercise. Um, but I would at least try to write every day, even if it's um, a simple story that pops into your head um, of, um, let's say something that happened in your life or you saw something while you were going to Starbucks or something that kind of sparked your attention. And it's something simple people could relate to, but then you put that into the world of the matrix. How would that look like? Or in Star Wars, how would that look like? Um, someone getting coffee in Star Wars. <laughs> how, how would that look like? Is it coffee? Is or is, is it a big like tank of something? And then allow your brain to just open up and just think of what else could be in that tank. And next thing you know, you're doing this story where something's being incubated in that tank, and that's the thing that makes the coffee. And then you put bring it to your home. And then you have your other animals eat it. And then once they filter it out through their system, it poops it out into this little jar. And then that's your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
That's gross. I love that. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, talking about coffee, sometimes you have, I don't know why I'm saying this, but uh, yeah. like that poop from animals. Yes. <laughs> yeah. you have as coffee? <laughs> Oh, no, it ends it's, uh, with deer poop and coffee. <laughs> what's it called? It's called coffee luwak or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, K and I, we've had it. Oh we've, my god! Yeah, the famous luwak coffee. How was it? It's great. It was actually good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm we not were a coffee actually, drinker, but it was great. Yeah, <laughs> and we were there to look at the the cats, right? We see They're the cats. cats. We see the process of like how these wild cats, you know, how they take the poop and make it into coffee, and then we drank the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but you see the cats, and they're wired. Yeah, they're, they're just nonstop from, walking around. <laughs> from what they Pacing. eat, but they naturally eat it. So it's yeah, weird. <laughs> but the thing is, and you know. It's not much of a thing, but the thing is that the after they poop it out, then somebody collects all the stuff and then deshells the um, bean and takes the the center part that was not actually poop in my mind. You know what I mean? And then they make that the coffee, and that's why I'm like, ah, uh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll try it. Yeah, sure. Oh, Did he wash it? Because it was in a protective shell, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then they roast it or whatever, and then they, whatever. So, if that makes a difference to you, and <laughs> you would be willing to try it or whatever, let me know in the comments. So I'm not alone here. It's really good coffee, actually. Yeah. It is. We brought bag uh, back a little bag of it. Um, it cost us like. 50 bucks just for but it's a so it's bag. wild to think who is the first person who discovered it yeah, yeah exactly. that's the disgusting part right Who's the person <laughs> who went like i'm gonna brew that poop yeah it's like damn cat <laughs> ate all my coffee ah yeah. what am i gonna do mm. i really need coffee <laughs> that's so yeah how did the hell did that even start yeah wow okay you know what and then I'm it became eat this. the most expensive <laughs> coffee ever, yeah. right? How wild is that? Like, how did it become the most expensive coffee as well? Like, I would love to see that origin story. Imagine <laughs> it's just all, like, marketing. You know? <laughs> In the end, it's just marketing. It's like, it wasn't a hundred centuries of tradition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Imagine it was just for the tourists, you know? Like uh, when we were wow. in China, we we went to this place and it had like all these weird exotic foods. Like uh, you could eat a starfish or you could eat a um, giant locust or a spider or tr or um, tarantula. not tarantula, but like scorpions. We had a scorpion. And then oh. afterwards, we told a local person or something. And then that local person was like, yeah, we don't eat that stuff. That's for the tourists. Yeah, and then they laugh at us. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's so funny. That's like, wow. Oh, man. As you're telling this story, I'm just thinking if there's a short film about it, where in the <laughs> beginning, in the beginning, it's like a voiceover of, of a scene a hundred years ago of them doing this traditional family thing, blah, blah, blah. And then just cut to present time. Okay, that's all false. <laughs> like, we just do this for the tourists. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's talking to his son, right? It's like, so this is how you will bring the family tradition forward by lying to people. So you can make more money. <laughs> I'm coming back to the uh, question with uh, Creative Writing. I think what you said, uh, hits him on the head as well, like um, doing it uh, every day or every other day, you know, keeping that consistency. And yep. it, it doesn't matter if you switch over something else. It's pretty much like how you learn. And if, if you have a consistency around that, it's it applies to 
other things as well like you see similarities i think yeah definitely because it's it's like you're reprogramming your brain you know like to to be able to think these crazy thoughts or you know because sometimes most people when um let's just say they're not in the creative field and you're talking to them you're trying to brainstorm almost all the time you go oh that's not possible oh that's not possible like those people usually they say that and you have to try to get your brain out of that's not possible mentality to everything is possible if I went this way that way and I found out recently because my daughter's taking a, like improv class and that in improv class there is no I can't there's only like uh, and how can I or something like that I forgot what the right you can't say no was. you can't say no you gotta yes say you can't say something no something positive keep the uh the thing going whatever the skit is yeah, so you give, give it a safe space to you. Don't ever put anybody down. You just go on with their uh, idea. And I actually sat in my daughter's uh, thing and and I got par- I became part of the class. <laughs> oh, this is Aww. hard. <laughs> You're this like, your can daughter. I try? Can I participate? Like that kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, the teacher. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. All the right. Teacher was- Every time I see a rib cage like this, it always feels like, oh, that's a perfect reference for a dragon or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> No, Bobby, you do some oh, amazing yeah. uh, creatures. It's so cool. The post you do on your Instagram, so cool. Uh, oh, thanks. You as well. Um, mutual, mutual admiration here. <laughs> I do wish I, I I should do more cuter stuff. Um, this one was fun. I did the background first, and then I cut out where the deer would go oh, man, that was cool. <laughs> right and then i just painted underneath it so so then it's this really nice silhouette but this is what it yeah, looks like underneath yeah. it's just a bunch of junk so cool all right so i think i think we're good at this point what do you think this has been about 18 minutes over the time um i feel like this a uh, it's probably a good time to uh, wrap things up. Mm-hmm. But don't you guys worry, everybody. Anthony is going to be back next week, right, Anthony? Yes. Yay. Coming back for some more. So that's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> so next week is going to be all about yoga poses, yoga oh. stuff. And it'll be really fun. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you'll think of all sorts of aliens and all sorts of things when you see these <laughs> poses here. Uh yeah, so I want to thank the audience, of course. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you to the mods, um, everybody that is in Discord, and uh, my amazing co-host, Kay. And, and the biggest thank you goes to our sleepy uh, guest of honor here. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> the wonderful, the amazing Anthony Francisco. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. All right. Take thank care, you, and uh, see you all next fun. week. Bye. Bye.